What's up everyone, I'm Jeff in Raleigh. Happy Saturday, that means I'm filming this on Saturday. Who knows what day of the week, but I guess you got a one in seven chance that it's gonna be a Saturday, but happy Saturday. Hey, today we're going to do a deep dive into Toyota hybrids and hybrid batteries. I have a special guest, which is exciting. I'm gonna to try to incorporate more people into my channel because we've got a lot of experts with a lot of passion who can teach you things and entertain you. This is my friend, Pete the Hybrid Guy, Pete has a YouTube channel also, and he's going to show you what it looks like up close and personal in a hybrid battery pack. We're looking at Prius, and I've got some questions for him. Pete, take it away. Hello, I'm Pete the Hybrid Guy, and Jeff, thank you for having me on your channel today. Um, today, we're gonna take a look at this Toyota Prius battery. This is out of a 2009 Toyota Prius with a nickel metal hydride traction battery. We're gonna do just a basic overview, take a look at it, um, and Jeff's gonna ask me a few questions, some common questions that a lot of people have about these batteries. By the way, I forgot to mention, I'm standing in my new screened-in porch. We have contractors building it right now. Big 16 by 18 screened-in porch with a 10 by 16 deck. I'm really excited about it. But Pete, you've gotta tell us, that hybrid battery pack what is the difference between cells and modules and blocks? You hear these terms thrown around. What do they mean? What are they? Excellent question, Jeff. The difference between cells, modules, and blocks. Real quick, uh, for all the viewers that are watching, um, you may be wondering why I'm wearing these particular type of gloves. Uh, sometimes, especially when you're working on a nickel metal hydride, what you may find is that some of the electrolyte can leak out on these bus bars. So I wear these gloves to protect my hands from any acid getting on them. But what's really important here is that we know the difference between cells, modules, and blocks. If you look right here, you can see that this little section right here is actually a cell within this long strip, which is called a module, and two of these modules make up a block. And so in this particular Prius battery, we have 14 blocks, which are comprised of uh, 28 modules, okay? And so each one of these cells is 1.2 volts, and 1.2 volts times six is 7.2. We double those up, we get 14.4. And, you know, that goes up the chain until we get our 201.6 volts for this particular Prius hybrid battery. So again, we're just recapping. This is a cell, an individual piece of a module, which is this large block right here. And then two of those modules together make a block. Pete, this is a question you probably get all the time. I know I get it all the time. Can you replace just part of a hybrid battery pack or do you have to replace the whole darn thing? Another great question, Jeff. Can you replace just one module inside your hybrid battery? There's a long way to tell you this and there's a short way to tell you this. So I'm gonna give you the short way because in another video, we're actually gonna talk about module replacement, what the pros and cons of that are, and get into some more detail. The short answer is yes, you can replace just one module if you know that it for sure has failed. However, I would avoid doing that as you won't get the best performance out of your hybrid battery. Now again, I'm not gonna give you away all my secrets right in this video, but I do want you to know that that is something if you needed to just limp down the road for a little bit while longer, you could replace just one particular module if you know for sure that it has failed. There are um, good diagnostic tools out there like uh, Dr. Prius that can help you identify uh, those particular faulty modules inside of your, your hybrid battery pack. Uh, but again, we'll dig a little bit more into that, but the short answer, again, for those who are listening, yes, you can just replace one or multiple modules if you know for sure that they have failed. Another question that I've gotten from viewers, how safe are hybrid batteries themselves? Are they dangerous to work with or touch or what can you tell us? Another excellent question from you, Jeff. Um, are hybrid batteries dangerous? The short answer to that is yes, but you don't need to be scared about them if you know what it is that you're looking for. Now. I have this particular hybrid battery depowered. I have the service plug grip or the main battery connector removed from the battery. What this does is it essentially splits the battery in half and it drops all of the high voltage 
out of the battery um, like you would find right here at the terminal. So I've got my trusty fluke meter here and I can show you that there is safety in testing this, this battery. As you can see, I've got my meter leads right on the hybrid, uh, the high voltage spots here where the main connect would go, and there's no voltage output. So yes, hybrid batteries can be dangerous if you're trying to service one that is plugged in and fully connected. You should still be very cautious though if you're going to replace a module inside here to make sure that you're measuring with a good meter uh, the different points of each module so you know um, what the what the module voltages are. Man, that was a mouthful, right? And so you know if there's any potential faults with inside of these particular modules as you're taking it apart. It is safe practice, and I do have them with me, to use high voltage gloves whenever you're servicing the main disconnect. Electricity is a crazy thing, and it always finds the path of least resistance. That means if there's a short and that electricity wants to get out, it's gonna go through you because you're about 70% water. So keep that in mind. Um, but for the most part, when you disconnect the hybrid battery with the main disconnect, the battery, the battery is relatively safe to work on. There wouldn't be as many shops and independent people and even DIYers out there working on these if they weren't uh, able to be safed down. So the short answer is yes, they are dangerous. The answer to help people is to say that they can be safed down and they can be worked on. All right, I think this is the last one I got for you today. We're gonna roll with it. How can you tell what are the warning signs or the preemptive things you can do to tell if your battery is failing? What if your Prius battery is going bad? What if your RAV4 battery is going bad? Your Camry hybrid? How do you know? Jeff, you have the best questions. How do we know when a hybrid battery is failing? Well, let me tell you. So there's a couple ways without using a meter to just know what your hybrid battery is doing. Um, the first thing is that little meter inside your multifunction display that shows you the battery level. It's actually one of the best indicators that you could, that you could have. Now I see people all the time that say, oh, I got my battery to go all the way up to the top. Well, that isn't necessarily a good thing. Okay, and I'll tell you why uh, in just a moment. Um, but that battery meter is actually critical to watch, especially as the vehicle ages. If we see a sharp um, discharge and a sharp charge when we're driving the car, that means that this battery is actually having a problem inside. If you want to think about this battery as like a five gallon bucket, right? And if we were to take that five gallon bucket and place it in a river where water was spilling over it uh, for years on end, eventually when we pulled that bucket out of the water, we would find that there would be some silt built up in the bottom of that bucket, okay? Now, depending on a lot of different factors, okay? That silt, really what I'm kind of comparing it to is the amount of capacity inside that bucket. So the more silt we have in the bucket, the less capacity we actually have to store electrical energy, okay? So one thing that is a big key indicator, like I was just talking about, is that meter on your multifunction display. If it drops rapidly, if it comes up rapidly, you have a battery that is in trouble, even if it's not setting a trouble code just yet. So something that we can do, which we'll talk about probably in another uh, video is, is hybrid battery reconditioning and how you can kind of mitigate um, having these, these battery problems. One more thing I'd like to touch on is um, these batteries also can be monitored through Dr. Prius as well. Uh, I get a lot of questions and I think we'll probably end up doing a, a specific segment just on the Dr. Prius app itself to help hybrid owners understand that data. That data can be kind of confusing. But there is a spot in Dr. Prius that says Delta SOC. Delta SOC means Delta State of Charge. 
And that delta state of charge is essentially the difference between the highest and lowest modules inside this hybrid battery. If we have a delta state of charge that is 1%, 2%, 10% or more, right, we're going to have a trouble code. We're going to have an unbalanced battery and that's going to cause um, battery pack failure essentially. So I um, hope that answered your question for that. If not, I'm pretty sure we can do another video on it to get a little bit more in, in depth on um, how to know when a hybrid battery is failing. Jeff, thank you so much for having me on your channel today and for all those awesome questions. Very informative um, and very good questions to ask, might I add. Again, this is a 2009 Toyota Prius nickel metal hydride traction battery. Uh, this is just an overview of the cells, modules, and blocks, and some basic things about this Prius battery. In another episode, we're going to talk about hybrid battery reconditioning and how to actually uh, repair one of these properly so that you can double the life out of your hybrid battery. Thank you so much for having me on today. I hope this helped a bunch of people, and I'll see you soon. Everyone, thanks so much for watching. I encourage you to follow along with Pete the Hybrid Guy. Thanks, Pete. I appreciate your time. But yeah, go to his page. I'll put a link in the description section, and then you can like his channel and subscribe to it. I really appreciate that. So thanks so much. Pete and I are going to be doing a series of videos on hybrids. All the questions you wanted to know but were afraid to ask. Maybe you've already asked them. I don't know. But anyway, follow Pete. And then the next video I'm going to do is going to be on his channel. And then we'll just keep going back and forth until you guys get bored. So thanks so much. Follow me on Instagram at Toyota Jeff one Follow me on Facebook at Toyota Jeff. I'm on TikTok. Yeah, I'm crazy like that. We're crazy like that. Toyota Jeff 2. Okay? Got a whole series of Toyota Jeff names. And then I'm on torquenews.com slash Toyota. I just wrote a Torque News story speculating. Rumors are flying everywhere about the new TRD Pro color for 2022. So check that out, torquenews.com slash Toyota. And you can always find everything about me at toyotajeff.com. Thanks again, Pete. See you guys next time.